Hi everybody, welcome to another Whiskey Mystery. I'm Phil. I'm Dima. I think we might have a few new people watching. You know, we haven't really introduced the show in a more basic way uh, for a while. So let's go through the steps, exactly what we're doing here. <laughs> this is really a record of our, what's gonna be a four year journey to blind taste over 300 whiskeys. Every one of these little bottles has a whiskey that we've bought and we're up to number 173. This one was picked by Greg. Hey Greg, I know you're in. And there is a spreadsheet. You can see the link at the top of the, the chat. And you can scroll through here and see all the bottles which are still in the blind bottles here. Once we know what it is, no, before we know what it is, we will try and rank it on our shelf. Our favorites being a Ben Nevis. There's a Rosebank in the top 10, all the way down to, now these are all really good whiskeys now because there's a lot that have been pushed off the shelf because there's only 50 here. So that means there's 120 or so that have been pushed off. Um, that's the first one, but yeah. I love it. But you can't say the worst one because we, we like everything on the shelf. So basically we will nose it, taste it, work through what we think it might be do some comparisons. You can guess what you think it might be. And uh, then we'll reveal it. And something else that we do is we have um, a viscometer. <laughs> Let's get the viscometer up. Here we go. So the viscometer, oh, I've got to get the, hang on a second. The timer. So we do a measurement of the day's whiskey against 40% vodka, just to see how it compares. And so I will start the timer. Okay, finally got that sorted. Um, you'll probably notice that I'll forget to watch the timer. Deepa, are you gonna watch the timer today? <laughs> hey, Gerben's in. Nice to see you, Gerben. Right. Four, let's get the show going. For the next 12 minutes, we are going to nose our whiskey and taste it, rank it on the shelf. This is the glass that we did our homework in yesterday. And I was, well, I was hoping to pick up to see if there was anything smoky left behind, but I didn't. I'm getting pure vanilla. And a fun, just a far soft. So when I get pure vanilla, sort of a light milk chocolatey kind of a nose on the previous day's glass, it normally leads to being ex-bourbon, doesn't it? But you never know. Sometimes very refill sherry casks uh, are similar. Here we go. Let's pour the whiskey, see what we get. How's the bubble factor? Bubble factor is strong. Yes, it is. So another thing we do is we try and guess the ABV. And one of the ways we're guessing is by comparing it after being shaken to others. So here it is compared to 48% ABV. Bigger bubbles, that's got to be a higher ABV. 50%. Okay, starting to look more similar to the 50%er, isn't it? Although... So it can be 50. Let's, let's compare to 56 here as well. Let's do all three. 50% hour in hours in the middle. 56 is starting to look a little stronger now. So I'm thinking visually at so, least. Uh, 50 to 55. Visually, visually I would guess it would be 53, for example. Now. I think more. Ah, 52 because it'll be easy to drink. Ooh, lovely. Now I'm gonna pour a little bit for a very watery start as well. Let's see. Right. So, <laughs> I think we're all ready. 
The skometer is still going. We should expect that to be about four minutes. Hey, Donna Pass, what do you say? Did you two get a subscriber jump after being on Roy's live stream? Yes, we did. Uh, maybe 30 or so people. That's why I'm saying we'll introduce new. So thanks to everyone who is new. Welcome aboard. Right. I'm feeling very thick. So viscous. You're thinking it's going to be viscous. Let's do, yeah, let's do the nose. Right, here we go. Did I start the timer? Yeah, we've been talking for two minutes already. A three minutes. Yeah. So no obvious heavy sherry notes. No obvious peat. I do not offer anybody now either. But it, um, I, so I would, my first guess is it's ex-bourbon. Or um, it could be reef. It's, it could be, but I'm just saying it's, if I had to guess off that first nose, it's quite candy sweet. Mmm, very bright. With a touch of delicate flower. Quite a touch of delicate flowers. Very subtle. It's more uh, uh, a flower of vanilla. Flower vanilla, yeah. Now, with the water, this is 50% water added here. And any. Now, there's a, there's a sort of a dusty oak coming out with that sweet flower now as well. And it's also a bit resiny, sort of pine needles, resin sort of thing. A dust of oak. Maybe. Oh! Deeper, you missed oh, the viscos I viscometer. <laughs> so that was. <laughs> we always get distracted with nosing. I know someone is going to shout out. I can tell you that worked out at 108% oh, the viscosity good. of Russian Standard Vodka, which is. Definitely above average. Average is like 106, 107%. So we're talking about something that's pretty viscous. And yeah, you can see it. Let's see if we can get some uh, a little leg shot while we chat. Yeah. Now, on the nose again. Yeah, pine needles, oaky. Touch of seaweed. Touch of seaweed. It's funny, I was about to say ivy like ivy vines, ivy leaves. But there's something green in there as well. Yeah. But almost like a little minty, but maybe the mint is more pine needles, if that makes sense. Um, It's good. I think it's old. I'm going to pour, I need another glass, don't I? Because I want to, I want to see what it's like when the glass is empty. So I think this could be an old ex-bourbon type of cask. But you know, I'm pretty bad at guessing the age. I think I've got slightly better, but let's see what happens as this empties out. Right, I'm going to taste the water version. Let's see what we get. Hmm. What did I call this? Wow. I'm getting uh, honey with the lemon. Honey and lemon. Freshly sweet lemon. Yeah. But in a shower. I call this one pine resin lemons. And it is that sort of complexity, subtle complexity, right? It's that very clear approach. Even. Bright. I mean, the notes are high. There's no real heavy bass notes in here, the way you'd get with heavy sherry. It's it's fresh, but it's also complex and sophisticated, isn't it? I'm going to use this to add a little drop of water. And simple. Simple, but sophisticated. <laughs> what about, how are we doing for time? Not bad. Yeah. What about um, ABV? What do you think on the taste? Now, I was guessing from the bubbles, low 50s. Ah, uh, do do or in fact that. Mm. It's very uh, Syrian cereal and seaweed. But Could be a little higher. Could be fifty-four. Um, it's actually a little too strong for me to enjoy exactly. Okay, maybe fifty-three. Straight or neat, but I'm I'm a little wimpy on that. Right. Okay. Ralph is guessing Glenburgie 21. Kleinlich 22, maybe MK. Yeah. 
Hát a finis, csak ön, pedig a... Igen, a pedig a férős. Pedig a férős. Nice. Mm. It's got a little bit of that pencil shavings. Sweet about it. Let's have a look at my picture. When we do our homework the day before, I also try and paint what I think it, it tastes like. So not much peat. If there's anything, then maybe a little bit of barrel char. I really don't think there's any peat in this at all. It's sort of minty pine floral, but there is a complexity in the finish with these little peppery, peppery, flowery things going on. Oh, it's, it's a good one. And also, uh, I've forgotten about it. Oh yeah, they're very thick. Creamy. They're better. I think we're in the world of old malt cask type of whiskies. So I think it's time to do a comparison. Here we go. Better or worse than? Oh, that is quite similar on the nose, I'm surprised. I'll tell you what it is in a second. Hmm. Better for me. That is a little more sour. A dash of sherry, something about it. Better or worse? I, I, put, I, I think I go for this one. I, I put. Yeah, this is a 23 year Glenmorry old malt cask. Currently on the top shelf. Um, I go for th this one is more sombre. This is 49.8 ABV and it is also from a refill barrel. Uh, does it say Hogshead? Well, it's one of 144 bottles. So I think we're on the right track. So, more. <laughs> so we're thinking better. Better or worse, this isn't on the shelf anymore. It's an independent bottle that we had. Again, more sour. The Glen Murray is sweeter than that. It's, it's good. Uh, and, uh, today, today it's brighter. Yeah. Uh, this is this is what's left of an eighteen-year uh, Ben Nevis, which we liked really early on. Similar as well. Okay. So you have that one with this today. I still think I like that. Are we going to rank? Are we going to? How high are you going to put this? I'm I'm trying to remember the bunner from last week. Oh. Uh, I think I think it's maybe here, but we'll come back to that in a bit. One more taste. Let's see. Now it's more simple. Yeah. I got me off. I still think, I still think we're in here. I don't think we're going to break the top 10. We got, it's much more simpler than we expected, maybe. But it's classy simple. I think it's old. I think it's 52, no, I, I've put water in mine. I think it could be 54% ex bourbon. Now. And uh, maybe, we got enough to vanilla. Well, yes, if it's old like that, it'll be a refill barrel. Now, what could it be in that range? I mean, there are, it's not that high uh, ABV. Let me scroll down a little bit because I don't think it's in the 50 plus, I mean, the 55 plus range. I think it's probably in this darker red section, but there still could be a lot in here. So we got Longmorn. It's not a PX, right? But Glen Berge could be. There's a Brook Laddie. There's a oh, could be. <laughs> could it be local barley? That would be funny. And there's a private cask of Aaron. And we got seven seconds left. Okay, Brook Laddie, Aaron. Okay, you you have a look at that. Ah, oh, time is up. Right. Let's see. Last sip. I'm just getting the dreamy thickness. I'm going to ask you why it's simple. Yeah. There's a lot of things it could be. I'm going to just start pulling them up. You put them on the table. An Aaron independent bottle. 
uh, a 22 year Dalyuan. Could it be a 30 year Tormor? A Springbank X Bourbon 14. We've got a 29 year Little Mill. A Glenbergy 21. Could it be a Kleinlich 22? <laughs> a Longmorn 14. Inver Gordon, a 52%. Oh, there's so many. Here's, here is a Bunahaven. No, sorry, a Brookladdy 19 year old. A Brookladdy 15 year old. A Ben Nevis single cask nation. <laughs> We don't normally pull this many up. Here's a Ben Rinnis. Another Ben Nevis. Um, we've even got a couple of smaller bottle. There's a Milton Duff, 24. Right, while you make your choice. I made my choice. Oh, have you? I'm gonna to go to the chat. Let's see what people think this is going to be. All oh, right. This is going to be very difficult. Let's see. Gigi, loving Deepa's shirt tonight. Ah, Deepa's got a Kung oh, Fu Panda a shirt. Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> right. I'm going to look for people's guesses. So Ralph is guessing a Glenbergy. Glenbergy. See a couple of people going for the Glenbergy. Um, tough one, Greg. Yes, it is. Good one though. Longmorn. It could be. Bruce, I don't think we were getting anything salty today. Deepa did pick up on that last time. Very sad. Um, Long Row 15 Chardonnay. Not not enough peat, I don't think. Brookladdy 19 GG. It's a possible. Ben Rinnis. Yeah. Who knows? Dal Ewan. Mood to Moves guessing Dal Ewan. Greg, the suspense. Aquami is going for Aaron 1996. Uh Whiskey 101 is guessing the Ben Rinnis. If it's a refill hogshead, yeah, could be. Ben, quite a few Ben Rinnises now. It's getting food quiggy. <laughs> I'm going to go with something that is actually on the list this time and say Milton Duff. Good move, Watchman 999. Pick something off the list. I had an older Ben Rinnis from Signature 21 years or so and was underwhelmed. MK. Well, where did Deepa go? <laughs> I didn't realize. <laughs> right, here we go. It's time to make a choice. It's mostly the summary, it's mostly honey cereal. Honey but the cereal? Of prime. Okay, I'm going to take out what? What are you picking then? Oh, you're picking the Ben Nevis? A 30 year tour more? I don't think so. I, how's, how's the Daluan? 51. I'm looking at percentages. 55 I'm for I'm a long morning 14. Bottom. What's the percentage on that? 53.6. Well, that's right in my guessing range. So is that. That nice second option. 50. I think it's older than 15 years old. How old is this Aaron? I've forgotten. But it could be. That's a 20 year old. Oh no, too many choices. The Ben Rinnis, 50% even. I think it's a higher ABV. 55 for the Little Mill. I think it's lower. 56 for the Kleinlish. Hang on. Hey, hey, you've had your choice. How much is that Ben Nevis? 50.4%, 50 50 too low ABV for me. I like Ben Nevis. I know you like it. I don't think it is Brook Laddie. So what does that leave me? I'm down to 53%, 52.6. I'm purely going on percentage. Dal Ewan, Aaron. I think I'm at the Glenbergie or I'm possibly at the Aaron. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mostly on the ABV. A bit more to be got a bit nervous. Glenbergie from a hogshead at 53.6 and I thought it was 54%. Ready? Mm. Mm. I know you get this. Oh, giving it the stars. I 
guess if it's going to be that high on the shelf, it must be a gold, a gold trophy. Right. Ready for the reveal. ABV. 50. Oh, it's 50 even. You could be right. I picked him. Ben Rinnis. Right. Ben Rinnis. What's the age of that? That's already a bomb for me. <laughs> age. 21. Oh. So. So far. At, I'm surprised by the ABV. I definitely thought it was higher. 21. It only cost us $126. That's impressive. So definitely worth it. It is a space side, and it is Ben Rinnis. Oh, but, but I thought it was supposed to be smoky. It's supposed to be smoky. No. Uh, uh, stop, are, you, stop on. are you thinking of Ben Rieck? No, Ben Rinnis. Um, ben Rinnis? That's what I thought. I'm going to, I've never tried before. Okay, this is Ben Rinnis, 21 year old malt cask. This works out at $5.2 per year, normalized to 40% ABV. That's pretty impressive. Now, where did I put the bottle? Read the nose. Hang on. This is, uh, oh, it's a 700 ml bottle. We must have bought it from Scotch Whiskey Auctions. Yes, we did. Back in March, 2019. Let me show you what it is. Let's see if we can get a little close up on the label. So, Ben Rennes, distilled 1988. Wow, it's a real oldie. Uh, bottled in 2009, one of 276 bottles. Spice, grassy, with dried herbs and barley sugar. I think that's, uh, yeah, that's not far off from us. Sweet and baked quality with spice fruit character on the palate. Finish, spicy sweetness, then an oak tang that lingers on and on, right? Um, how many, uh, one of 276. I've noticed with old- I don't know who makes scent. I've noticed all malt cask in the UK, 700 ml bottles are always 50%. Oh. And I've heard people reviewing from the UK saying old malt cask is always 50%. Oh. But that's not the case in the US because here's a 750 ml bottle. Uh, this one happens to be a long one. This is 54.9%. Uh, this little mill is 55.8%. So, are there any- uh, That is 750 as well. Yeah. Are there any 700 ml old malt casks which are not 50% even? Right, well, I don't think I can give ourselves any fireworks here. I'd like to claim some, but it was only once I saw 50%. There was... Yeah, but the three, the note. No, I've done it. I've done it off the label. Oh, have you? Okay, I'm going to give herself some fireworks for the fact that we thought it was old, ex-bourbon, whatever. <laughs> but let me have a look at the chat. Let me stop again better than us. Let's bring the chat up. Ben Demon Hunter, evening. Welcome in. Let's see, who got this? Ben Ben Rinnis isn't smoky oh. in contemporary time. Well, 1988, let's see. Yeah, remember to leave a thumbs up. Thanks, Gigi. <laughs> older Ben Rinnis are triple distilled. Oh, by older, would this be a triple uh, distilled? It's, it's, it's green, mostly green. I don't know. It's, it's prime of any. I wouldn't say I don't have that much experience. I would expect triple distilled to be a little more kind of glassy smooth. That might be a mistake to think that. But this is quite powerful and, and it's thick. gritty. I'm not sure. Maybe. Uh, cask type, Greg. I don't know if it really says anything. Um, Oh, it does. Charge from a refill hogshead. Yes. There you go. You said refill. Mm, Second fill. Yeah. Not getting enough fun in a... Well, 
that's the thing. If you're going to mature a whiskey for 21 years, you're going to put it into a refill barrel, aren't you? You wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't use a, a brand new barrel because it would be too oaky. Or at least that's common in Scotland, right? Uh, Graham Fraser just arrived. <laughs> I'd have guessed that one. Oh, really, Graham? There you go. Have some fireworks. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> refill hogshead. There you go. Great. The year I graduated high school, Bruce. Well, there you go. Anyone, anyone's birth year? 88? <laughs> it's possible. Uh, I'm looking to see if anyone got this. I know someone got this, right? The 750 mil OMCs I have seen in the US were 50 also. All mm. oh, right. Um, need a damp fireworks animation, I think, Nick. You're right. Oh, I put a pen in. Alberta, it's up in the cold north. <laughs> Just joined. What is the bottle, Anuj? It turns out it is a Ben Rinnis old malt cask. Uh, there you go. Right. Oops. Should we um should we check from the bottle? Yes, please. I'm still waiting to see if anyone got that. There were lots of people who got it. Who got it? Someone tell me. Whiskey 101. I got it first. Yes. <laughs> oh, Greg, you've got some great 1988 whiskey. Papa. There you go. Right. So, well, if that's the case, Whiskey 101, congratulations. Fireworks for you. Now, you know what to do. Give us a top shelf, bottom shelf, deeper side, fill side, some description of where you want to pick the bottle from. Any different from the bottle? No, not much different. It's just good. It's actually, of all, it is simple and the battery is straightforward. But yeah. I had the dish provide. But we really like that old ex bourbon subtle complexity. It's not overwhelming. No. Mm. I would quite like to compare it to something like the Long Row Red. Don't get that right now. No, it's not here. Oh. For now, I will preliminarily stick it here in the middle. I had brought up Rosebank 21, just as a like, if it was going to make it into the top 10, do you want to try? I thought I never get another opportunity. Just to see, because when, when I read that it was triple distilled, it is triple distilled. I thought we should try Rosebank. It, it is triple distilled. Uh, triple distilled, 21 years old. And 53.8%. Wow. A uh, very expensive bottle now. I'm going first. Oh. You know, it's not a million miles away. It's actually pretty similar. But... So spat is yeah. fantastic because it's so great. Subtle, but mm. very much in presence. In presence. This is, it's in the same direction. Coming back to the Ben Rinnis, we're talking about something which is a little harsher, a little more sour. And more honey, more badly. Actually, this has a sort of a little depth of honey mm. about it. But they're quite close. I have to say they're quite close. Now, if this is a $1,000 bottle now, and this is a $126 bottle, well, probably not now. It's probably 200 isn't it? Um, I mean, the Rose Bank is better. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> it can stay up there. It's very sweet, brown Asher. Hmm. It's just 
fuller, deeper, a little more range. But it's not, it's not big and bold like a long row red no, or something. No. Okay, back to the chat. Uh, yes, <laughs> Hazelburn is slightly cheaper triple distilled comparison. Greg, oh, Rosebank, 21 year, nice. But there are even better ones, I'm sure. That 12 year flora and fauna that Roy has uh, might be better in my opinion. Actually, we did compare to it and it's only 40%, isn't it? And couldn't hold up in a direct comparison for us. Um, but maybe by itself. Donna Pass, these 18 to 23 year indies from Reefle Bourbon Hogsheads are great. Tried a bunch of eight to 14 year ones too just to try distillery, but they aren't really ready yet at that age. Right. And especially if they are refill hogsheads and it's only eight to 14 years, it probably needs the extra years. Graham Fraser, Ben Rinnis has a partial triple distilled until a few years ago, according to the malt whiskey yearbook. Oh, okay. So something. Don't you mean I mean triple distilled this one? Or partial. So sort of like Springbank, the way they go no, hang on. Which one does two and a half? Mortlack. No, Springbank does a funny mix as well, don't they? Um, Whiskey 101. Okay, we are going in for a bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Deepa. Deeper side, bottom shelf, in the middle, at the front. In, in the front! Down there. Yeah, we haven't had a bourbon for such a long time. Stugi! It's the old malt cask bottle from the pre-Hunter Lang split with Douglas Lang. Is that right? So um, you're talking about the style of this bottle is when they were they were still, uh, all the Langs were in one team. So it is a real oldie then, a 2009 release. It does say Douglas Lang and company on the bottle, oh sorry, on the box. And these say what? Uh, these say Hunter Lang Company. Hunter Lang Company. Douglas Lang Company. Yeah, okay. What's up, Glen Morangy? That's Hunter Lang as well. Right. So it, it's, oh, and under. it's before oh. the, the brothers split. There you go. Yes. Right. I think. Oh, where's the bottle? Time to pick a new bottle. We are up to 171, I think, right? And hang on, who picked? Whiskey 101. Whiskey 101, right. Let's see what we're going to get. This is going to be for Thursday. I know I got the, I get the day wrong all the time. Let's see what it's going to be. How many bourbons are there? There's about six bourbons left. There's a lot of dust on this bottle. Is it? Oh! Oh, no. <laughs> oh, hold on. Hold on. This could be. Look at the dust. Can you see the dust on this bottle? A uh, little bit. Right. Have we got anything to do this afternoon? No. Okay. Is it a bourbon? Is it a bourbon? I'll let Deepa go first with the easy bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. It really could. Be. <laughs> Is it a bourbon? Are you sure? What should we do? Okay. We need to consult the chat. Do you like it? I quite like that. I mean, um, if you like bourbon, that is nice. I think it seems so far off. Have another go. That's rich. Right, hang on. I mean, definitely of a flower. Quite large bubbles. ECBP 12. Mm. Strength wise. Up and on mine. No, no, sorry. No, up and never after again. It's. 
<laughs> Considering we were drinking 50%, it's probably somewhere similar. Yes, it's quite soft. Oh, Whiskey 101. Is it old per 30-year-old? <laughs> <laughs> it's not bitter. Oh, no. A domestic Jack the Pickled Hound. Bruce, a winter night's dram. Not a bourbon, but a blend of rye. No, you think you're going to be like possible? We got this blind, soft, and more mellow. I think... And not right. that straw. It's time to keep rolling. Now we're going to do it live. Right. I'm going to fill up a shake bottle. Let's see what we've got. I was guessing 50%. About to save mm, two days. I threw this stuff at me. Right. I think he's. What is this? Here we go. Let's break out what we think is a bourbon. Now, of course, this could be Old Perth. It could. Uh, what are you doing? Well, you're going to have one. Okay. Have a little one then. It could be a Cavalan, because we've made mistakes with Cavalan before. No, no, but that's very strong ABV. You have called Cavalan as a bourbon. I have called... Yeah, but, but, but ABV is very soft. ABV, Cavalan is normally a glass city. I'm just giving an example of how we've mistaken other things for bourbons before. So we're going to not just tear off the label immediately. Bubbles. We put a drop of water. Yeah, give us a drop. Now, it has been said, mm. it has been said that bourbons typically don't benefit from water as much oh, oh. as single malts. I don't know. Is oh, that true? I don't know. Right, bubbles. Here we go. Rolling on. Well, those are. Oh, that is. Oh. That's bourbon bubbles, isn't it? Let's just go to sixty-one percent here and compare. So it's not, it's not so that it's high. 55. 56. Now, bourbon bubbles do have a different quality. What are we thinking? I thought you could be 57. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to, I'm just going to jump into the chat. Let's make sure that uh, we're all on board here. Let's see. Had a sample of Old Perth 23. Old Perth is very popular up here in Alberta. Did you think it was like... The best one. Ben, did you think it was anything like a bourbon? <laughs> of course, it could be a different Old Perth 23, but I'm sure. Uh, Stu, you don't let deeper into a card game. <laughs> what is the card game? If you're playing poker, you know the phrase poker mm. face. Yeah, where you look at your cards. <laughs> and if you have something fantastic, you don't go, Oh, wow! <laughs> <laughs> I tried not to. <laughs> Time to add E to whiskey, Andrew. Yeah, I think you're right. How many US whiskies on the list, Greg? That's a good point. Let's bring the list up. Um, oh, take the chat off. Now, I'm just going to reorder by... Can I reorder by region? Hang on, let me, uh, let me see if I can do that. Region. Let me see if I can reload that. Oh, I, I want to reorder, but I don't think I can. I'm going to do it again. Are we reordered by region? Let's see if it comes up this time. No. What we can do, though, is just look out for the ones which have a, an orange label. So... There's one, Old Ezra Brooks at 50.5, High West Mid, Mid, uh, Mid Winter Nights Dram that we just talked about, also very close to 50% at 49.3. There's a Buffalo Trace, that's just the standard 45%, Elijah Craig 18, 45%. Oh, that's it. There's only four? Right. Start guessing. I think that's it. Of course, this is all presuming it's a bourbon. <laughs> um, it's uh, at least 
not over bar. Now, it's only fair that we should compare this to a bourbon. What are we going to compare it to? Intermission. Yeah, I've got an intermission. But what should we... We should compare it to Old Perth 23, shouldn't we? <laughs> yes. I was the Anna Gagarin. Colonel Taylor, we don't have any left. I left that one. Um, we don't have Elijah Craig. I think we have... Uh, I'm trying to think of what right. bourbons we have around 50%. We have Booker's. That's higher. Woodford. We have Woodford Reserve. We also have um, 1920 Old Forester. Right, let me have a taste. No, it's meant to keep up with the chat. For me, high ABV bourbon is better with just a drop or two of water. Donna Pass. Yeah, there you go. You have a taste. Whiskey 101. I jumped in with the High West as soon as you poured it. Only 49.3, but I'm sticking with the guest. Now, High West. Isn't High West... Is there a wine involved in High West? I think it's in, we have it in our our label here somewhere, our paper labels, right. Blend of straight rye whiskies. Oh, French oak and port barrels. Uh, so possibly, act one, scene one is the one that we have. Is um, the first step at all that not too bad, it's soft. But they make it more and more licorice. I am not fond of licorice. I'm actually quite enjoying this. Yeah, but... Would it make it on the shelf? But no, for me, I'm sorry. I mean, I, mean, I prefer... I prefer Damson Manuka. I quite like it. It's got a nice chocolate finish. Okay, we should do some work on this. Hang on, let's give some proper notes. Now... Bourbony, but I could be convinced. It's very uh, sugary, su- very sugary va- va- vanilla. But, but it's quite but a very balanced. It's pretty balanced. There's a sort of dark richness to it, though, um, like the opposite of the Ben Rennes, which I said was all high low high notes. It cannot be dry. It's not dry. I could be. We don't know. We got this more uh, sweet than bitter. I should say fry, but more grassy. I'm actually... Is more... I'm getting, you know, dark fruit combined with a little bit of dark chocolate kind of note. It's almost from like sugary. I don't know if I'm getting that much sugar, but then I, I like sweetness. Mm. I'm going to have to keep chat, uh, keep keep my eye on the chat. Stag Junior? No, we don't have any uh, left, Tim. Christmas spices. Oh, but the ABV is... Very similar to the days that I put this about 50. I think it's in the 50s. I don't yeah, I have some more. You saw it just... I don't think it's super high. Port, no idea, but I'll say EC. I oh, this, uh, 50, 51. It's very soft, very light. It's well rounded. Yes, it's very balanced. There's A little bit tobacco leaf and winey at the end. A little spicy, but mostly there's quite smooth it's component to it. soft. What else are we getting? I'm not picking up any specific spices. Um, are you picking up spices? Okay. My memory of most bourbons is that they always have this we always call it perfume this sort of woody and almost like a soap perfume note i'm not getting this at all Mm. i'm not getting it on this one so i mean it's not my time but it is better whiskey 101 the high west is a limited release of their rendezvous rye which is great finished in french oak and port barrels I could be convinced that there's port in there. Port barrel. Do you think there's a little bit of port influence? Bourbon or rye? Bruce, I just don't know. Mood to move. High West rye. Just in time for part two, Aquami. Yes. 
You missed the main reveal, but they're doing a bonus round. <laughs> what timing? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I lost my connection for a few minutes. What did I miss, Greg? Nothing. We're stumbling through what this 171 is. Could you be convinced? I'm trying to think. The only rye that we've had, lot 40 cask strength uh, uh, is rye. Woodford rye. Woodford. It is less woody. But, but the first one you mentioned. Lot 40 cask strength. Uh, we had a sample of that. Let me try again. It's almost buttery, mm. which means it's about weak. And it has to be 50 ABV. Right. Long row red, Cab Frank. This is um, this is purely. Fine, fine. I think. But the definition. This is purely as a. Would it possibly go on the shelf? This one. Oh, I think it's the end. This is the end of the long row red Cab Frank. I'm this is the most here. for myself. Just as a, just as a, do you prefer this or this? Let's see. I don't think it's going on the shelf. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's go back. Why? Why do we prefer that? I think because it has no vanilla and it has no flour or parsley. It's not that. It's, it's the range of flavour in that glass. Yes. Let's go back. It's very, yeah, it has sort of bigger pepper. It's a smaller pepper. It's so simple by comparison now. Um, have another sip. Now, the flavours are good, but it's... Um, it is... It is very corn. Well, this, if it's rye, it's not corn okay. at all. Okay, it's very... Um, it's like a mandate. I, I could see vanilla ice cream with a port syrup. It could be. I think it's sort of a um, heavier piece. It's very um, sparkly alive. Right. I think it's time to guess. I think it's... I think it's going to be one of two, right? It's either... Ezra. It's either the High West or it's the old Ezra Brooks, which I'm looking at upon my shelf of empty the bottles. Them up. Oh my God. Okay. Can you grab those that off the end? Yeah. Now these are both samples. What do we think? <laughs> paper, paper whiskey. Okay, go to the fifteen years. Fifteen year, um, fifteen year bourbon, or no age statement. I think it actually, but this part we got is they're not all uh, finished. Right here we go, over to the chat. I think I put a pot in it. Well, not exactly, but it has been matured some part in port barrels. Okay. Better go to the chat. What are people thinking here? Jack the Pickled Hound. The bourbon I drammed yesterday was dark, heavy oak char. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm not getting char on this. Rye is sweet and spice. I think, I think it could be then. It's not that spicy today. It's not a typical rye at all though, Watchman is saying, if it's the uh, midwinters. Let's see. Midwinter is quite different thing than most ryes. It's more sweet, subtle spices, nutmeg, clove. Bruce, yeah, that's, I could, yes, I could go there. I'm not a fan of rye for the most part, but the High West product is really good, Watchman. See, I liked it. I, I, put, I put an ass cream. Why do all US people, <laughs> we're US people, I think, in this context, Greg, say Cab Franc instead of Cabernet Franc? Is that better, Greg? As it should be pronounced. Cab is a taxi. <laughs> That's true. What does it actually say on the... Um, what does it actually say? Cabernet Franc. Cabernet Franc? You better say that. 
Is that better? Cabernet Franc. Not no C in the end. Cabernet Franc. Franc. <laughs> no, no, uh, no. It's good to come back. Let's see. Thanks, Nick. I appreciate your gesture to make it possible. Oh, <laughs> talk about something else. Uh, Greg's Whisk Guy. Phil and Deepy have an excuse, though. Some others... No, we don't have an excuse. What excuse? Deepa might have an excuse. She hasn't heard it. <laughs> Long row from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, wild guess that the 15-year Ezra Brooks just to be stubborn. But then no oh, finish. Maybe. Okay, Greg's I giving think. us a thumb a thumbs up. Well pronounced, guys. Okay, thanks, Greg. Well I don't know. I have no it's prudent. Whiskey 101. You're gonna get to choose again for this bonus round. A B V. Oh it's 49. 49 Oh 49 part three. It could be 49%. No age statement. It's a ninety-five dollar bottle, apparently. That is pretty expensive. Pay for ninety-five dollar. Pay for ninety-five. Yes, I think it's a good ninety-five dollar bottle. Okay. I've got a question mark for region, <laughs> but it is high west. So did we really get it? Wow, fantastic! At least it is not Old Perth Thirty. It, it is High West, a mid-winter's night dram, Act 1, rye slash port I've written down here. Now, um, yeah, I think I read the port. well, it's actually port and French oak. Okay, let's put, let's put it down. Let's let people have a look. Can you read it? Maybe. Maybe we go to the other camera. This is the one that we have. Oh, hang on. Region, Park City, Utah. Is that right? Bottled by High West, Park City, Utah. But hang on, where does High West come from? So this is French oak and port barrels. So two separate types of barrels. This that one... It's sort of softer, metal. We have to think, thank Martin for this sample. Thank you, Martin. Martin C. Are you in, Martin? I did see your name fly by earlier. I'm going to try a little bit more of that. If you think of all of the American bourbon slash rye, well, there are no rye in it. This is 100% rye. Oh! Hang on. I need to be very careful what I say. This is a blend of straight rye whiskies. Wow. Now, I understand a bourbon could be 49% rye in theory, right? It just needs to be 51% corn. So when I'm reading High West and it says a blend of straight rye whiskies, how much corn could there be in this or is it 100% rye? I don't know. Compared to the bourbons you've had before, do you think this is better? Mm. Lovely. It's, it's beautifully apparent. Yeah. It's well made. And, but if anything, it can be maybe I, ABV, I would prefer. I think that's really good. If that's a hundred dollar bottle, I would say it's well worth it. We would, we would, you would rather spend a hundred dollars and add it towards a hundred and fifty for long row. Mm. Okay, let's go back to the chat because I think we need some updates from people. Uh, oh, hang on. Fireworks, of course. We get fireworks. Well, there were not other options. It could have been a Cavalan or an Old Perth. No. Come on. We at least identified it with the help of the group. <laughs> uh, Greg's Whiskey Guide. Is it good for you guys in the chat? Oh, I don't know what that means. Let's see. That is an older one. They are on Act 8 now. <laughs> wow, okay. So this is an 
They must be doing more than annual release to get to number eight already, surely. Bruce, Midwinter is a blend of six, six. and 16 year old rye from Kentucky. Oh, that's about, is that for mellow or soft? Okay, the distillery is in Utah, but they originally sourced. So what do you think? That's not that one. What do you think is the origination of the act one? Act one, scene one, yeah. I mean, are we, it's not MGP, right? Because that's Indiana. But it's MGP. It's not MGP. But, but it's that. Uh, a big distillery oh. that does a lot of sourced whiskey. So if it's coming from Kentucky, where's it coming from? Right. Get another bourbon for the trifecta whiskey one one Oh no, that is a possibility. It might be sourced by MGP. Okay, I was just thinking that, but... Oh, it is. It is MGP. Or not. Right, now Deepa and Whiskey 101 will choose the left whiskies. Oh, the whiskey, <laughs> yeah. The, all the remaining US ones, right. I like an old-fashioned label. Hmm, Utah. So not MGP. Let's get to the bottom of this. I know someone has the answer. 16-year-old rye from Barton. Okay. Wow. Sourced MGP and I see. So they've got the young stuff from MGP. And then they've got some heavier weight, let's say, for the age from Barton in Kentucky at 16 years. Any idea what the percentage is? Maybe it's only 20%. I actually know what is the percentage of corn in it. So, so far, there's no corn in this, right? Uh, it's 100% rye. So maybe that's why the boat of getting some sweet in it. Sugar. No, no, hang on. Greg, straight rye is at least 51%. Oh. Just needs 51%. So, okay. We don't know. If it's MGP's high rye recipe, then it's 95% rye. Okay, so it could be very high. Uh, double win. I guess that's too soon as you poured it. Yeah, that's true. Actually, Whiskey 101, you did nail it twice today. Fireworks. Wow. For you. Right. Graham Fraser, tonight's my first non tasting night in the last six days. Had a great session with Jim McEwen and some of his special casks last night, especially the Port Charlotte and Octomore. Uh, wow. Very good. Okay, a Kwame. This straight rye whiskey is 95% rye, 5% malt oh so a little bit of malt but no no corn so far mgp is 80 percent rye 20 percent malted rye so so i'm getting this from this sugar that's really from the back of the boat yeah the picture is generic from the internet curious what actual act you have no it's true but i looked it up and i have written down here Act one on the bottle from Martin C. 49.3%. So the picture does represent what what we actually have. Um, Bruce. Yes. Yes, we do like it. I like it. It's old MGP. Right, I think we've got all the answers we need at this point. Okay, here we go. Another bourbon rye nun scotch. We can keep this going until Thursday. <laughs> right. Deep aside. Deep aside. Top shelf. shelf in the middle at the front. Hey, give me Amrut. Right. Amrut. Amrut Port Nova is definitely still on the list. Let's. It is very, very, very dusty. Is Amrut possible? Better be about Amrut. We have got a fairly high dust factor. They're all Better getting dusty. Amrut. No, Amrut is a sample from maybe Sash or Mike. I can't remember. Right, here we go. Pick another bottle. Hang on, what are we up to? One, 172? 172. Who are we going to credit this to? I'm just going to write 101 on it. <laughs> That's a bit confusing. Fine. Bye now, Pusky. Same thing. Because I, I don't want to write that much. Oh no, we don't have any clear glasses. Yes, we do. We have one left. Are we ready? Is it a bourbon? Here we go. 
Oh, <laughs> it is not a bourbon. Not a bourbon. Fantastic. Right, before we go there, let me catch up with the chat. Uh, let me see if anyone's saying Donna Pass, MGP 95% rye, but Barton could still be. Okay, so maybe, maybe a little bit of corn, but we're talking at least 90% rye. Malt is needed for fermentation processes. Fair enough. Oh, I see. It's funny. MGP is this massive whiskey producer. You mean like Diagon? Diageo? Is this similar? It produces whiskey for many, many, many labels. But you can go in and you can look at the recipes. They have many different recipes. How much rye do you want? How much corn do you want? What level of char? And what's amazing to me is considering it's such a factory of whiskey production, it has a very good reputation for quality. So good for them. Right. Could it be Amrut? No, it's too light. No bourbon. Light bourbon. A very light bourbon. Whiskey 101. Sorry all. I've let you down on the third pick. <laughs> right. Whiskey 101. Are you going to uh, nail it with a guess? Uh, the papa is the third. Is there any peat? I don't think so. Apparently people like it and have fun at Graham Fraser. Okay. This will be for Thursday. Thanks for the extra bottle today, Whiskey 101. Mmm. Oh, that has a, that's got a bite, ha, harsh finish. No poker faces on that one. Thanks everybody for watching. We will see you for whatever 172 is. Mm. Oh, bourbon. <laughs> okay. I don't think it's from MGP. We will see you all on Thursday. Thanks everyone for watching. What is that? <laughs> what is what? <laughs> yeah. It's the out button. That's what that button does. Ha <laughs> ha